Hi, and welcome again to the uh, RAI series of one-on-one -on -one conversations with Irish women architects working around the globe. This is part of the RAI Women in Architecture celebration of 2020. And today I'm speaking with Anne Doyle, who's an architect practicing in New York. Anne is a graduate of UCD School of Architecture, and she did a master's degree in Rice University in, in Houston, Texas, I think I've said that right. Um, and has been working uh, in New York City for about the last 25 years where she lives and practices with her husband and she has two teenage daughters, I believe. So Anne, maybe you would like to tell us off, uh, start us off maybe, um, just talking about what it was like growing up in a house where both your parents were architects. Okay, uh, yeah, I grew up in Dublin and uh, both my parents were architects. They had their own uh, firm, Peter and Mary Doyle. And um, the office was in the basement level. It was a three-story Georgian house and the office was in the basement level. So it, we kind of, we, we all lived in the office, myself and my two sisters. Um, but there was no, you know, the office was constantly part of the conversations around the dinner table, everything like that. But there was no, growing up, there was no pressure to be an architect. There was actually more pressure not to be an architect. Um, you know, there was, uh, pressure, you know, this is so difficult, this is so hard, well, you know, what are we doing? And um, so in a way, I was, I was never encouraged to be an architect because of growing up in that situation. Mm -hmm. But I found my way into it. Um, in school, I guess I was good with art and music, those kind of creative things. And um, when I came to leave school, my parents, of course, weren't encouraging me to be an architect. And when you're 17 or eight, I was 18, you go for that then because you're like, why are they discouraging me from this? This is what I'm going to do. So that's kind of how I ended up um, going off to UCD to do architecture, which is where they studied themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's where they met originally. And were either of them teaching there when you were a student? I believe my dad may have been teaching. He, he taught a lot in the earlier on in, um, I think in the seventies. Um, but um he, he may have taught one class or something at the time, but, but I don't think he taught me ever, no. Okay, and, and what was it like when you graduated then? What year did you graduate? Did you graduate into a strong economy? No, this is kind of a recurring theme. No, every time I sort of graduate it, uh, no, it was 1992. So, um, uh, you know, I was in college the late 80s, early 90s, UCD. It was so kind of peaceful and quiet and there was, not much going on in Dublin. Um, uh, graduating then, Group 91 had just um, happened. So, um, you know, Dublin was just full of rotting buildings and um, very little development. But they had just won the competition the previous year for the Temple Bar um, project, which was just starting, really starting that year that I graduated in 1992. So in a way that was kind of a turning point it was sort of too early for me. I, I left, I kind of went to explore um, other places, but that was definitely a turning point um, for Dublin and I guess Ireland in general, 92, and, and gradually it became more busy, you know, more busy and um, more projects happening uh, towards the later uh, 1990s. Uh, so, so where did you go to work? Did you stay in Dublin then when you graduated? No, because um, yeah, there really wasn't that much opportunity and I think also being the daughter of two architects who are pretty well known in Dublin, I found it very kind of small and suffocating in a way. And I, I just wanted to go away. And, um, you know, I never thought I'd be away a long time. I just was going for an experience for a little while. But um, so, yeah, I wanted to go away. And I ended up going to, first up, I uh, ended up going to Chicago. Um, I got a visa for uh, you know the US and you had to have a job to get the visa. So my dad who had worked and lived in Chicago, he um, studied at IIT himself and uh, worked for Mies van der Rohe in Chicago. He um, fixed me up with kind of my first job after I graduated in Chicago. And um, so I was there for about a year and a half and then eventually made my way to New York, which is sort of where I had always wanted to make my way to. Chicago was like a little detour just to, to, get, um, to get going. Okay. And so when did you do the masters then? Was that, that was some years later or was that around that time too? So, yeah, I got to, um, so I got to New, I 
was in Chicago, worked in this job, you know, $7 an hour. And um, it was it was good, a good experience. And um, got to New York about 94, uh, 95. And again, it really wasn't busy. It, it, it was quite quiet. So it was quite hard to get work. Um, I, we did get a group, a large group of us from UCD were there at that time together. And we always did, did gradually figure out getting jobs, but um, a lot of the name architects would want people to work as interns for free. You know, we're paying rent, we couldn't do that. So, but between us, we had, we made our own contacts and kind of figured out um, getting jobs ourselves. So I did that for a few years and then um, applied to do a master's and uh, ended up going to um, uh, Rice University in Houston. Um, I, um, yeah, I, uh, after a few years working, you know, working doesn't always turn out like you think and you love um, the kind of college atmosphere and uh, independent work. So um, that and just wanting to wanting to do something else, other, you know, I decided to um, pursue doing a master's and I ended up getting a scholarship to go to um, Rice University in Houston. So that's why I ended up there. And it was at first um, total shock to the system landing in Houston. Um, you know, I'm pale, I'm Irish, I'm, you know, not at all um, Texan in any way. So, um, it, but it was the fact that it was so different from anywhere else I'd ever lived. You know, during summers, I'd lived in London and Paris and uh, Dublin even and New York, Chicago. It, it was it was a crazy experience just to be there for that short time. Um, you know, looking back, and I have some really good friends from that time too. Yeah, good, good. So, so then you 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 obviously came back to New York, but you're not in New York right now. You. No, that's right. This is why our internet's a bit um, uh, iffy. Um, yeah, the last day um, we were in New York um, was. Uh, March 13th of Friday. That was our last uh, office day um, in New York. And we have a house up in the northwest part of Connecticut, about um, 90 miles from New York City. And um, we moved up here that, that weekend thinking the girls were still in school, thinking we'd be back the following week and see how things were going. But we just, we never went back because school that weekend, school was canceled and they've been doing remote school. And uh, we've just been working remotely. So uh, our practice has about has well has four four architects and an office manager, and we've just been connecting uh, remotely into our server, which sits all alone in our office, uh, which is right by the World Trade Center. But um, so yeah, we're renting an office for our server, um, and uh, it's it's been going you know pretty well. We've been able to um, keep afloat. Um, we're working in Connecticut. Another employee is working from Connecticut, and. Another one is working for Brooklyn, but she's from Ecuador and she's planning to travel to Ecuador and continue working from Ecuador. So it's like, because we're not seeing each other, it doesn't really make a difference whether she's in Brooklyn, Connecticut or Ecuador. So it's, it's yeah. sort of interesting that we can keep going in that way. Yeah. Not perfect, but. No, and do you think, do you think this has changed the way you're gonna work in, in the future, Anne? Do you think you'll spend more time out of New York, like splitting your time between the two now more than you may have done before? Or can you not wait to get back to really, it's it's so hard to tell right now what's you know we're still in the middle of this thing so it's just so hard to tell how New York is going to go it's been really hard hit unemployment is you know 18% it went up from 4% this time last year there's huge vacancies you know as a construction person you know part of the construction industry vacancies in offices um, apartment buildings have record um, vacancies um, so it's just so hard to tell whether it's going to bounce back or whether we sit it out here longer. I don't know. And also being here is part of the problem because so many people left the, you know, yeah. the services mm -hmm. that are supplied to the people that people aren't there. So um, we have a client who's a building, you know, a large apartment building owner. And he was saying, it's not good that everybody left because he has all these empty apartments. So. I don't know. It's it's hard to tell uh, how um, how things are going to go. For now, yes, definitely see through to September. We're going to be here, but um, past that, who knows? And New York has kind of got the virus under control. New York State, mm -hmm. but um, the rest of the country um, has not. So it's it's anyone's guess what's yeah. going to happen. 
And do you think New York will bounce back? I mean, I know we don't, none of us know, but I mean, you know, 9-11 had a devastating, devastating effect on New York, but it, it recovered relatively quickly, do you think? Yeah, 9-11 was, this is much more deep um, of a cut, you know, like, uh, it's. I think it's about eighteen thousand people died. It's. It's. Mm. It, so there was that. There's the, the this people. There's. It brought up this whole inequality between um, neighborhoods. You know that the wealthier neighborhoods people left. People didn't get sick. They weren't so crowded. They weren't essential workers. The, the all the out, a lot of people in the outer areas who who is, are essential workers. They're the people who uh, were really hard hit. And um, so it's brought up all these kind of. Um, problematic issues that were there beforehand, but it's just kind of on surface them, you know, healthcare, people don't have healthcare, education, uh, the inequality all around. So yeah. I don't know, it's, it's going to take a lot of work to um, build back. I, I don't know. Um, I sound very pessimistic about it, but I know it always does bounce back, but um, who knows how long it's going to take because there's so many issues. And then um, the murder of um, George Floyd and mm -hmm. the protests, and then there was, looting which wasn't really connected to that but um it's just been an incredibly difficult time for new york yeah. so, and it still is it's not gonna it's not it's not you know it's not gone so we're not back to normal at all so you, you're not in any um you're not in a rush to get back you're happy to be out of the city at the moment at the moment i'm ha i'm happy to be out of the city at the moment because the city that is there right now really isn't the city that um, it was, or, you know, it's, it, it's just completely different. There's no theaters, there's no, you know, no restaurants. The, the, the life of the city is, um, is, is totally different. So I, I'm not in a rush to get back there and find it sad, I guess, going back there. But, um, I mean, there, there are positives though, to, uh, what has been going on in terms of, of the, the virus and um, people taking over the streets and, you know, they've closed streets for people to walk and extend park space. And, and there's things like that that are happening in the city that are um, interesting and positive, but uh, the, the general atmosphere, it'll take a while to, to get back to normal. And, and what about your practice and, and your client base? Do uh, you think that you'll steady your steady going at the moment we, uh, do you see new opportunity or do you see difficult times ahead yes <laughs> definitely <laughs> difficult times ahead for sure i mean you can't have um all this and not have a major recession of some kind so um right now we've been actually more busy because just trying to for the last couple months since march we've been very busy with jobs that we had, but, you know, six months time, um, we don't know where we'll be at, you know, um, if the, the, the city is losing people, uh, you know, a lot of what we do as architects is we're, we're building houses, we're building, you know, yeah. offices, we're building schools, whatever for the people. So, um, I don't know. It, it definitely, it's going to affect us negatively for sure. There's, there's, very little positive in this. I, I was trying to think what's positive. You know, positive is that, I guess, um, just personally positive is that I've been able to be here. We've been together as a family and, you know, we managed not to be sick, but um, in terms of the business, I, I don't know how it's gonna go. Yeah. And how are your daughters managing away from their friends and away from their school? And Homeschooling, how's that working out? Um, homeschool, for, for me, they're 14 and 17. So luckily for me, I feel like they kind of took care of themselves. I didn't have to try and help them with homeschool. Uh, you know, if they were younger, you, you might have to help them. So they, they sort of took care of themselves. And um, my older daughter, who is graduated from high school and going to college this year, she had her virtual graduation. Wow. Uh, um, just last week, actually. Um, so, you know, they've, they're, they've been pretty resilient, but uh, it is, it is difficult for them not seeing friends. And, you know, it's just been four of us for since March. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's crazy. 
Yeah, it's a long time because we're, we're slightly ahead of that here now. We've, we've, as you know, started to open up and certainly yeah. the young people um, around where I live are, you know, gathering in, in large groups and there has been some difficulties with that. And um, I think, you know, it, to, to, to still be in that lock-in phase uh, um, this far down the line is difficult. I mean, it's it's not as locked in as it was, but since we're here, we just, we're sort of remote anyway here, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so would you, have either of your daughters expressed an interest to study architecture or would you have any no. advice for them in that regard? Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking about, it. The, yeah, the family curse. Um, <laughs> No, my older daughter who's going to college now, she's um, enrolled in engineering. So she says definitely not structural engineering because that's too much like architecture in her mind. <laughs> so we don't know what she's going to do. But what I do think is, it is good about college here as a difference from Ireland is you don't have to sort of make those detailed decisions about what you want to do right at day one, you know, which I think is is really a great advantage to have a few years to take various classes and find your own path and fi find what you want to do. Yeah, I agree. So we'll mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it is. And, and then you, you do a three year degree, don't you? And then you, you can make a decision then about what you They do. I mean, they, it's, it's a four year degree and then people may go for a master's or even within the degree, you might start off saying you, you want to do math and French or, you know, and you, you can take classes in all various departments to make up your um, collection, you know, of, of credits. Yeah. And you, you can totally change your path, you know, and you don't have to start back at day one. You kind of, um, yeah. you gather credits as you go. Yeah. So um, do you think architectural education is the better for that system? Have you employed graduates in your practice? We, yes, we, um, we really like Irish graduates, but um, we have, uh, I, on a, on a, for, for them, I think it's better. They do like a four year liberal college degree and generally, and then two years of architecture. So you kind of, um, you're not in architecture from day one, you decide after the fourth year, or whatever, that that's what you want to do. But for an employee, it's hard because they've had less time doing straight architecture. So um, they're maybe not as, um, not as, I don't know, just practiced with stuff mm -hmm. as graduates who may do five years straight of architecture. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you were giving advice to your younger self now, oh, yeah. at, mm -hmm. what kind of advice would you be giving yourself? I would say, I thought about this. Um, I would say I wish I could be more, um, uh, just more, more, more focused and more, um, you know, uh, strategic, I guess, in what I wanted to do. And I think um, I don't know how that it could be my personality that I'm not a very strategic person. I just kind of go along. But I think if I was, you know, a younger person, I would really try hard to be strategic and find mentors or people either like in college, maybe colleges should have like guidance counselors that kind of help you find what, you know, architecture is such a broad um, career. Like what are the parts of it that you really enjoy and could succeed well at? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wish I could be more strategic. I don't know how I can change that now. Um, I, uh, so yeah, that would be my advice um, is to try and really think hard, like make a business plan to yourself of wh what you want to do. And yeah, it can change, but at least to, to, to start something like that. And then I was also sort of thinking about like that fact of not being able to make a plan. I think for women architects, I, I don't know if this is uh, true or not, but um, part of being a woman, I think part of our skill set is being able to be flexible, to be adaptive, to kind of go with the flow, you know, more than maybe our male counterparts are more, you know, straight with their path. So, I mean, these, the flexibility is a positive trait, but it's also sort of, um, 
it maybe lets you get lost and not not be able to find your path and exactly what you want you know so I, that's what i really would advise trying to trying to dig deep and find out exactly what you want mm -hmm. okay be pig-headed <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned about mentors and um, it's one thing that i feel strongly about as well i think having a, a mentor is, is really important and they can help you get through the tough times and they can also give you that push Yes. Well, when you need it uh, to, to, to take the big step and somewhere you go. And, you know, I think, too, yeah. on the, just on the mentor point for a second, um, I think, too, for graduates now have a big advantage, uh, you know, with social media and all this, mm -hmm. the, these things that they can keep in touch with professors from college or, or people that they've, you know, uh, found can help them. So I think, you know, it's really important to keep those contacts and, um, you yeah. know let those people help you uh find your path yeah absolutely absolutely so so what's next um for you i mean obviously you're you're stuck in connecticut for the moment but have you anything any plans for the next few years about what you'd like to do with either with your practice or any new projects that you'd like to take on um i i I would like to take on sort of more independent projects, maybe design build sort of projects. Um, uh, but I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, exactly. Uh, you know, and I've also been thinking a lot about a lot of our work is uh, residential um, sort of uh, apartments and uh, high end residential, they call it here. Um, and after this virus, I feel like the idea thinking about the idea of luxury is the idea of luxury cha going to change you know um past idea of luxury was um large square foot you know really expensive wallpaper and all the bells and whistles and maybe um maybe just think i don't know it'll be interesting to see how it changes and maybe to try and be part of it that the idea of luxury isn't that it's having a little outdoor space having you know because that's what people are craving yeah. Right now in New York, you you can only go outside with a mask ever. So um, I don't know. It'd be interesting to say. I'm not. I don't know exactly my role in any of that. But I think um, to try and do some more personal projects and um, think about that idea of what people want as luxury. You know, after this uh, COVID um, yeah. times. And just another um, thought I had. Here in Dublin, um, during the lockdown, we were all saying um, about the bird song and about there were more insects mm -hmm. around and flowers and yeah. the lack of noise of traffic made you appreciate all the sounds of nature an awful lot more. Um, yeah. And, you know, you kind of wonder, is that going to follow through in, in that we will care more about nature and therefore it'll help, you know, with the green agenda and reducing emissions? Do you think, do you see anything like that happening in a city like New York? Yeah, I, yes, we've been, I've been back there a few times and it's true, it's been incredibly quiet. It's getting busier now, but um, lack of traffic and definitely bird song and all that. And yeah, I think it will. I mean, it will, it's, it has to affect people to like sort of reset their brains as to what's, mm -hmm. what's important. Um, yeah, definitely will. And do you think there's the political leadership in New York or in the United States at a wider level to, to, to drive that? Um, the United States at a wider level is a disaster. Um, so, I, you know, our president is really, um, and hopefully he's going to be gone in November. So um, New York State uh, is actually quite um, quite ahead, ahead of the game in controlling the virus. We, ha um, we have environmental restrictions. We have a lot of things here in New York State that um, you know, should be everywhere, but they're, they're not in all the states. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know. It's, yeah. we will see. We'll see. Okay, good. So, so that's, that's been really interesting to hear about, hear about what's going on in New York. And I know you mentioned to me earlier on that you thought Cuomo was doing a pretty good job in terms of managing what's going on. Yeah, and his, his slogan is build back better. So as an architect, I'm not sure what, I, I mean, I think, as an architect, yeah, we're not sure what that means, but I think personally, everybody is sort of grappling with that idea. How do I want to build myself back better? And um, 
you know, no answers, but. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that's a good thing to finish on, build back better. And let's hope that that happens for all of us architects who are probably going to have, find difficulties over the next. Yeah. Months. All right. Okay. So thank you very much, Anne. It was a pleasure yeah. to speak with you. Thank you. Thanks, Carol.